Well, it's been a few months. How about I stop keeping you all waiting and get back to work? Hello everyone, it's Tyrant, and I hope you're all doing well. And yes, 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 I know this is not the video I promised I would do for my next What If video. But, honestly, with how strange the world is right now, I'm just kind of glad I'm making videos at all. So, let's not waste any time and get back to what if Raditz went to Earth with Goku, shall we? Because, honestly, this is one of my favorite what ifs so far. Now, in the last part, I mostly covered events that took place before Dragon Ball. That being, the destruction of Planet Vegeta, and the arrival of Kakarot and Raditz. And that's something that was a major change, is that Goku's name is still Kakarot. And that's mainly because his brother is here to let people know that is his real name, Kakarot. So. Yep, for the rest of this what if, I'm going to be referring to Goku as Kakarot, so get used to it. Besides, I'm pretty sure a name change is the least of our problems. Another thing that I kind of neglected to mention that I kind of wanted to avoid talking about was power levels. And that's mostly on the account that they kind of become irrelevant later down the line anyway. But before that point, they are still kind of important. So let's talk about them, shall we? For Raditz, I'm going to lowball it and say that his power level is 450. This takes place before Z, so it wouldn't be anywhere near as high as it was there. But he's still stronger than Kakarot, and... It's not like he hasn't had anything to fight. I mean, there is Kakarot, there's Grandpa Gohan, and there's wild dinosaurs occasionally. So, it's not like he doesn't have anything to challenge him. There's just not much around that puts up much of a fight. As for Kakarot, I'm going to be a bit more generous and give him a power level of 180. About where he was in his second go at the World Martial Arts Tournament. This is mostly because he has Raditz around to spar with, along with Grandpa Gohan. So, he does have tough opponents, and would definitely benefit from his say in biology. One last thing before we begin. Last episode, I said that Kakarot was 12 and Raditz was 16. This is actually not true. Kakarot was only 12 years old about the time of his first go of the World Martial Arts Tournament. So we need to subtract a year from the both of them. So Kakarot is 11 and Raditz is 15. Nothing major, just wanted to correct myself because I like being more accurate. Anyway, let's continue with the story of what if Raditz went to Earth with Goku. We last left off, as I mentioned before, with Bulma and Kakarot setting off to find the other four Dragon Balls. Only now we have Raditz along for the ride too. And that's actually going to be a lot of fun, and you'll see why. Now, there comes the question where both Raditz and Kakarot wonder, how are they going to find the other four Dragon Balls, and how are they even going to get there? Raditz thinks about the suggestion that they could just fly, but then remembers that Bulma can't. Kakarot then suggests, why don't they just use that car thing Bulma has, only to be reminded that he and Raditz destroyed Bulma's car. But, no matter, Bulma just uses another one of her capsules, which has another car! With the team back on their road, Bulma, Kakarot, and Raditz 
begin to search for the Dragon Balls proper. But we are going to fast forward to the next day, when Raditz and Kakarot find a lost turtle while training, while Bulma is off doing her morning business. Turtle explains why he's here. He's lost and he's trying to find his way back to the ocean, and he's been doing so for a really long time. And then asks either Kakarot or Raditz if either of them can help. Kakarot's okay with it and agrees to help, and Raditz reluctantly agrees. Mostly to make sure that Kakarot doesn't get into trouble. Of course, Bulma overhears all this and isn't exactly on board, but Raditz just chimes in and says that she can wait here. They'll be back soon. Shouldn't take that long. Especially since they can, you know, fly. And just like that, Raditz and Kakarot fly off to take Turtle to the ocean. Much to Bulma's dismay. The two Saiyans do come across a bit of opposition in the form of a pterodactyl, but with a quick heat blast from Raditz, that proves to be not an issue. And thus, both Raditz and Kakarot are able to take Turtle to the ocean safely. And like in the anime, Turtle does indeed ask the two of them to wait on the beach so we can get something for them. The only real difference here is that Bulma's not here and instead it's Raditz and Kakarot. After some waiting around, Turtle does return with Master Roshi on his back. And Roshi does introduce himself as the Turtle Hermit. And as a reward for saving Turtle and reuniting him with him, he wants to reward the two boys with something. So he calls upon the Immortal Phoenix! Only to remember that it was killed off by some bird seed that was not exactly good. And then he calls upon the Flying Nimbus! which he gives to Goku because he can actually ride it, but there's something that is a bit off here. Why does he need the Flying Nimbus if he could already fly? And the thing is about that, is that the Flying Nimbus does help conserve Ki. Raditz doesn't need it because he's a lot stronger than Kakarot, by more than double even, and therefore doesn't need to conserve Ki all that often. Plus, I'm pretty sure he couldn't write it anyway, but that's besides the point. What is a bit different, though, is what Raditz gets. Because he did help. Remember that pterodactyl? If it wasn't for Raditz, that turtle might have been turtle food for the pterodactyl. So Roshi decides to ponder what he could possibly give to Raditz. The cloud is out because that already belongs to Kakarot. He can't give him some other trinket because it's broken. Can't give him this, can't give him that, yada yada yada. While he's contemplating, Raditz takes notice of the trinket around Roshi's neck. And asks him if he could look at it. This might be what he would like to have. And Roshi complies. And thus, Raditz is able to identify that trinket as a Dragon Ball. And thus... That's how he gets a hold of it. Because he asks, hey, can I just have this for my gift? Roshi not knowing anything about what this thing is, and kind of running out of options, agrees. And thus, Raditz and Kakarot thank Roshi for their gifts. Roshi thanks them for saving Turtle. And the two Saiyans fly back to Bulma. I don't think I need to depict how excited Bulma is when she sees what Raditz brought back from saving the turtle. Four Dragon Balls in their possession, Raditz, Kakarot, and Bulma can now continue their hunt for the other three. But I think I'm going to end it here for now, just so I can save Oolong, Yamcha, and Ox King for the next part. So, you'll have to join me next time. But, thank you all for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to keep the algorithm happy. And I hope you all enjoyed this part, because I enjoyed making it. As mentioned before, this is one of my favorite what-ifs. And I'll see you all next time.